Hey guys, it's Jamie Trill here, your favorite CPA and financial literacy coach, and I wanted to bring you some really important updates. Tonight, it is Saturday night, August 8th, and of course I've got nothing else to do but come here and give you some important updates <laughs> about the stimulus and what is going on with all the things right now. So the president just signed four executive orders that I wanna to talk to you about that could be impactful for you. So I'm gonna talk through those in a minute, but first I wanna kinda of take it back a minute and just talk about why these executive orders have happened. So over the last few weeks, the Senate has been negotiating, the Democrats and Republicans have been coming together, trying to find a middle ground between their two bills. The Republican bill was approximately $1 trillion for kind of the next large stimulus, similar to the CARES Act that we had back in March. And the Democratic bill was around $3 trillion. So there were a lot of different sticking points in here that they just could not get through. They kind of set a date of yesterday to hopefully have a deal. They did not have a deal. So as the president had kind of said he was probably going to do, he has put some executive orders in place. Now, this does not mean that uh, they are not going to be negotiating anymore. This does not mean that a stimulus is off the table. Congress is still negotiating. This was kind of a emergency executive order that the president decided needed to be put into place. And I'll talk to you in a minute about kind of some of the controversy around that and the fact that there's probably going to be some legal challenges around these executive orders and whether the president actually has the authority to do them or not. So importantly, even when you see these, there's still a lot to be worked out here. And it'll be really interesting to see how all of this kind of plays out in the end. But I wanted to at least show you what they are so that you would be aware. So let's jump on into them. I'm actually going to go over to whitehouse.gov and show you where you can actually go read the executive orders. They're all really short. They're like a page to three pages each. Uh, so you can quickly read them, but I'm going to show you them and walk through them for you so that you can kind of get the high points and understand what is going on and how it might affect you. Okay, so now we are over at whitehouse.gov and it's actually whitehouse.gov uh, forward slash presidential dash actions uh, forward slash. If you put that in, you can actually see all the executive orders that the president has signed. And you'll see here on this page, we have four executive orders that are showing up as uh, dated August 8th, which is today's date, Saturday, August 8th. This is when these were signed by the president. So I'll tell you the four, just really quickly overview, the four different um, executive orders that you can see here. You're gonna be able to see the very first one, which is actually related to um, unemployment. So it is uh, changing up and um, including some additional unemployment benefits. So we'll jump into that in a minute. The second one is about payroll taxes, specifically employee payroll taxes. So those are social security and Medicare taxes. There's a deferral on that, which I will show you and talk to you a little bit more about. And then there are two other ones. One is extending a moratorium on foreclosures and on evictions. And the other one is about student loan relief. So we'll talk about those a little bit as well. But I really wanna focus in on the first two for this live, because this is really very impactful, specifically also to business owners, but employees as well. Okay, so we're gonna jump into this first one here, which is memorandum on authorizing the other needs assistance program for major disaster declarations related to coronavirus disease 2019. This is really talking about unemployment and unemployment benefits. So remember, through the CARES Act, we had an extra $600 that everybody, regardless of whether you were on regular unemployment or you were on pandemic unemployment assistance PUA, you would be eligible to get this extra $600 in federal pandemic unemployment compensation, FPUC. That's what the $600 was. It ran out at the end of July. So there's been a lot of talk between the parties of how much they want to give. There's been a disagreement on how much they think um, these should be extended. There's been uh, a lot of debate on this topic specifically because of the concern that it disincents people to work and that some, some people were making more on unemployment than they were at their job. So there's been a lot of debate about what needs to happen, but it's been very clear that to kind of prevent that economic cliff from happening, there needs to be uh, some additional support for people who are unemployed during this time. 
So we're going to come down to section two because that's where it really starts talking about what this is. So under section two for providing disaster relief funds, if you go to the second paragraph, it says to provide financial assistance for the needs of those who have lost employment as a result of the pandemic, I am directing up to 44 billion from the DRF. The DRF is the Department of Homeland Security's disaster relief fund that has some additional money left over in it. Um, at the statutorily mandated 75% federal cost share be made available for lost wages, uh, lost wages assistance to eligible claimants to, su to, su to supplement state expenditures in providing these payments, at least 25 billion, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll get into that. You wonder what the 75% means. Um, let's read on and, and, and it'll get into a little bit what the 75% means. So the states are also going to have some obligation here as well the states are going to be obligated to pay the other 25%. So what this is basically saying is that the federal government will pay 75%, the states will pay 25%. How much are we talking about? Well, let's come on down here. Um, in C, we see here that it says, in exercising this historic authority, the secretary acting through the FEMA administrator shall, subject to the limitations above, approve a lost wages assistance program that authorizes the governor to provide a 400 dollar payment per week which shall reflect a three hundred dollar federal contribution to eligible claimants from the week of unemployment ending august 1st 2020 so remember our last benefits the extra 600 ran out at the end of july so this picks up on august 1st and again that would be three hundred dollars federally one hundred dollars from the state what's the problem here well states are probably going to have a bit of an issue with this states ha are running really dry um on funding right now, especially given all that has been going on. And so this is likely to be met with quite a bit of pushback. One thing that's a little bit unclear to me is whether this will be an opt-in. It seems like this may be something that states can opt in or opt out of. But the question is, if states opt out of their extra $100, will they still get the $300 from the federal government or will they not if they don't pay their 100 So I think that this is something that we're going to see a little bit of discussion on. This is going to be a big point of contention over probably the next couple of weeks. So this is, if you're hoping for some additional unemployment, this might be good news to you, but I just caution you to wait and see. And until that money is in your bank account, uh, don't count on it because there is going to be some further discussions and this could play out differently in different states as well. So one last important thing to point out when it comes to this unemployment uh, executive order is that it does change who's eligible for it. So previously, the extra $600, as long as you qualified for at least $1 in your state benefits, you would be eligible for the extra 600. This has been changed now in this executive order and you must actually be eligible for at least $100 in benefits, either through regular state unemployment or through pandemic unemployment assistance. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're also earning a little bit of money, you can pretty quickly trip over that line depending on what state you're in and what their calculation is for benefits. And every state is a little bit different, but just keep that in mind because you could easily kind of tripwire yourself out of the extra money uh, a little bit easier than you could with the extra 600. Okay, so now I just jumped into the second one. This is the memorandum on deferring payroll tax obligations in light of the ongoing COVID-19 disaster. So this is talking about payroll taxes. Importantly, this is talking about employee side payroll taxes. What does that mean? Social Security and Medicare are payroll taxes, okay? That is what employees pay a portion of and employers also pay a portion of. If you're self-employed, you pay both sides of it. You pay employee and employer. But this specifically is just talking about employee. The reason being there's already a deferral process in place for employer payroll taxes. That was part of the CARES Act where you could actually defer your payroll taxes for the majority of 2020 and then you wouldn't have to pay them until the end of the year 2021 for half of it and the end of the year 2022 for half of it. So that was already something that was in place. Now we're looking at employee payroll taxes. So this would in, in, uh, increase paychecks actually going to employees because you now would have less taxes taken out. However, this again, sounds really great, but this is a deferral. This is not a forgiven or forgiveness, okay? 
at least as of right this second and at least as of how it's written. And I'm going to show you some of the discussion that is uh, ongoing on this. But that's really important to know is that, yes, paychecks will probably be bigger if this comes into uh, into play and once this starts happening. But uh, this does not mean that that money is definitely going to be forgiven. You may have a large payment that you have to make at a point in time in the future for all of those deferred payroll taxes, which I think as as an accountant is just um, it, Armageddon, uh, because the, the real truth about this is that a lot of employees won't understand this fact. They'll think their, their taxes are coming out as they should, and they won't realize that they're going to have to uh, potentially come up with a large amount of taxes to pay the government at some point. Now, let's look at this a little bit further just to kind of see what it says. So again, it says deferring certain payroll tax obligations. At one point, this was very much talked about. The president was very much in favor of a, a payroll tax holiday. Um, and I think that's still what he wants to do, but doesn't necessarily have the authority to do that within this executive order. But I'll show you kind of what may um, lead to that in the future. So if you come down here to this section four, tax forgiveness. It does say the Secretary of the Treasury shall explore avenues, including legislation, to eliminate the obligation to pay the taxes deferred pursuant to the implementation of this memorandum. So they're gonna look into it, but nothing is guaranteed, okay? So let's remember this. If this happens, then we're not sure if this is gonna be an opt-in, if your employees would opt-in to this, or if this is something that would be automatic. Either way, be aware of the fact that right now as it's written, it is just a deferral and it's something that you're gonna to have to pay eventually anyway. Now, what are the dates of this deferral? It goes from September 1st through December 31st. Um, that is really what the, the rules around it are. And it only works for those who make roughly about $100,000 or under. You can't do a payroll tax deferral if you make over $100,000 in your paycheck. Okay, so real quick, I'm just going to talk about the other two. I'm not going to jump into them, but you can go to this website and read them if these are things that are important for you. But again, there is now an executive order that extends the eviction and um, foreclosure moratorium that the CARES Act put into place. It extends it even further uh, right now. So you won't have to worry about getting evicted. Those were about to roll off actually at the end of August, those protections. So those will continue on. And then also the student loan relief. So there was student loan relief that was already in place that also was set to expire uh, not long from now. And so that actually extends that student loan relief through the end of 2020, okay? So if you were uh, able to get that student loan relief earlier, you're gonna get that extended even further. All right, so those are the main changes. Those are really the things that uh, this executive order does. Again, Congress still talking about what would uh, a stimulus look like. So there's some really important things that weren't included in these executive orders. A second round of stimulus payments that's still being discussed by Congress, hopefully something that will be passed before too terribly long. It doesn't talk about any changes to the PPP loan program and extension of it or um, allowing people to get a second one, which is something that had been talked about as well. Um, it doesn't go into anything on EIDL, and there was some talk around the EIDL advance and potentially even being able to get the full 10,000 of the EIDL advance forgiven. Uh, so that is still something that would have to come in another round of legislation if it comes at all. And um, any other working capital type loans. So there's also some talk of different working capital loans, potentially with some forgivability element to it that might actually cover more than just payroll, might be a little broader than what PPP is. That's something that's being talked about as well as part of the Restart Act. Um, and I talked about that in my Q&A yesterday too. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and go watch that. My Q&A from August 7th talks a lot about it. But that was not... Uh, anything that was in here either. So there are a lot of things still open, um, a lot of things being still being discussed that have some pretty broad impact. So hopefully we will see some kind of stimulus that will be passed by Congress. But this is what we have in the interim. Likely will be challenged in the courts. We don't know how all of this is going to roll out, but I wanted to at least get this in front of you, get you this knowledge so you can start thinking about how this may impact you. Okay, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. I am talking all about this here on this YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe, please, and like the video. 
If you have questions about anything going on or you really just want more information about all of this, I am talking all about this stuff in my Financial Literacy for Women Business Owners Facebook group. So make sure you join it. Even if you're a man, we are we have plenty of men in there right now, but we're having some great conversations. We've got thousands of people over there sharing their experiences uh, with all of the stimulus we're learning from each other. So it's a great place to come over and connect. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.